In this presentation, we're gonna enter a transaction related to a pledge in our accounting system. Get ready, because here we go with Applos. Here we are in our not-for-profit organization dashboard. Let's jump on over to Excel to see what our objective will be. We are in Excel, we're in tab number three. We're now recording a pledge. Now the pledge is gonna be similar to the contribution. However, we haven't got the money yet. So it's a promise to pay. If you compare this to a for-profit type of organization, the contribution would be similar to us doing the goods or services at the same point in time that we get paid. Uh, and you can imagine giving a sales receipt like at the register uh, at that point. And then the pledge is gonna be similar to us doing a service or uh, providing goods before we get paid and you can imagine sending out a bill or invoice so uh, typically in accounting systems we would call that an invoice that we would make that would mean that we did work and they owe us money now the only difference here is they kind of owe us money but not because we really did work for them they owe us money because they just simply promised to pay us the money and it's a not-for-profit so remember again the difference here being there's not a there's not a transaction directly between us and the client or customer or donor or pledger uh, because we're not doing the work directly for them they're paying us to do work for somebody else the community so therefore you could it's a little bit different in terms of our collectability possibly on the pledge since we don't have a, a transaction really that happened as we do have a with a for-profit organization uh, and, and therefore have some recourse if they don't pay us typically but the transaction is going to be much the same if it was a for-profit organization it would be done usually with an invoice uh, here we're going to use a, a pledge type of, of documentation. So we have a contributions receivable then going up. So we got that's, a, that's an asset type of account. So we're going to have to track who owes us the money. We have the contributions with restrictions, which is basically our revenue account. However, we're going to put it as restricted this time because we're going to say it's a time restriction to, to note the fact that we don't yet have the money at this point in time. So that'll help us to uh, have that time restriction to note to, to, to not, you know, Get too excited on spending the money until possibly we get it in any case we have the contributions revenue is going to go up and uh, that's an asset account we're also going to have to track this by uh, contributor so we're going to have to track this by who's promising to pay so we could try to collect on it and then we're going to go down below we got another revenue account but we got the revenue account now being with restrictions so now we're adding that restrictions within uh, this format where we only have like one column at the end here that uh, means we need two accounts however if we then go into our statement of activities we want to break that out into its columns here and those that statement of uh financial position we want the statement of activities down here here's the statement of activities and so that's going to be with donor restrictions without donor restrictions so now notice this contributions line basically our revenue line now being broken out between columns these two columns so i don't need in other words two separate um, accounts over here i just need one account that i can break out between these two items and whereas if i only had one column i would need to be representing those two items with two columns as we saw on the trial balance so how are we going to do that over here on Applos? Let's go take a look at it. Let's bring us on back over. Now there's a couple different ways we enter this information into the system. So let's take a look at them. If we go to the donations tab up here, we have the donations tab. And then under the donations tab, you see pledges. However, if we go to this pledges tab, that's actually going to uh, track the donations, but it's not going to be recording them on the financial statements. So remember, what we said is we're going to be entering this information, but we'll enter it as a uh, with a restriction, as a restricted a item, as a time restricted. So it's going to be on the financials with a time restriction. On the other hand, you may say, okay, I'm not going to put this on the financial statements for the not-for-profit organization, but still be able to run reports to be able to track uh, that information on who owes the money. And if we're gonna put it on the, in the books as we're gonna do here, we're gonna, have, we're gonna be then using the fund uh, accounting and the fund accounting, we're gonna go to the accounting item uh, dropdown, uh, I'm sorry, the transactions dropdown, and then took, taking a look at the receivable here, which will basically create kind of like an invoice uh, in a similar process as you'd see for a for-profit. So let's test both of those out. So uh, just so you can see the difference, I'm going to first start with the donation here. I'm going to go to the donation tab and then to the pledges. I'm going to create another pledge and this will be a similar process as we as we did before when we entered a contribution. 
uh, and it'll be looking like a similar form. We're going to use an item in order to enter the pledge form. But just remember, when I enter this pledge form, it's not going to show in accounts receivable, but it will track the pledging information. And then we'll enter another the other way, which will show it in accounts receivable. To do this, I would have to set up an item or like a purpose over here. So I'd go over to the purposes. And then I'm going to be saying that I'm going to add another purpose. We're going to add another purpose. And the purpose will be a pledge. So it's going to be a pledge. And I'm going to say pledge. And then uh, on the accounts down below, I'm going to choose pledge. Now, if it was to be recorded, if it was going to result in a recording, it would be the contributions account that is um, restricted. Restricted contributions. Then the fund would be restricted. And then we would want the tag here, the tag being a time restriction. It's going to be a time restriction. However, again, it's not going to record uh, this transaction. This would be the normal function of this transaction. But the pledge, again, isn't going to be recorded on the actual financial statements. It's just going to be tracked as something that we're going to use. And then we'll record it the other way. So I'm going to go ahead and say save then. So there is that. Then we can go to the pledges tab. Pledges tab, donations, and then the pledges tab. We could save the plus button to add a new pledge. So we'll say plus in order to add the new pledge. And then I'm going to put up top that we have, uh, I'm just going to call it Pledger 1. Now I've already set up Pledger 1 here, but Pledger 1 is who we've got. Pledger 1. And then the purpose is now going to be a pledge. So this is going to be the driving factor, which typically would you know, drive the transaction or the accounts within it. And then it's going to be the 108,000. So the 108,000. And then we have the January, January number three, January 3rd. And then the due date. Now note, you could have like a, they could pay us uh, in, in payments, like weekly, monthly, or quarterly. Or if they just have a one-time payment, we keep it at the one time. I'll keep it at the one time for our purposes. And then the due date. When's it going to be due? When do we expect this by? So uh, if it's on the third, we're going to say, ah, we'll give them till the end of the month give us the money all right so there's gonna be that so we're gonna record this I'm gonna say uh, save and close save and close so there we have that now just note again this one's not actually gonna show up on the financial let's check it out though let's go right click up top let's create our reports and I'm gonna right click and duplicate this tab so I've duplicated the tab I'm gonna go to our reports let's open up our good old reports and we're going to be taking a look at the balance sheet and income statement, but we're going to look at the balance sheet by fund as opposed to the normal balance sheet. If it's not up top for you, that's because you don't have a little star next to it down here, which will put it up top. I like to look at the fund balance sheet because it's uh, more fun to do so than just the normal balance sheet. And we're going to go back to the left and it's more applicable. And, and we'll right click on this tab again. Uh, and then we're going to open up the income statement also by fund. So duplicating this tab, we're going to go to the reports then. Within the reports, we're going to be going down to the income statement by fund. Then we'll change the, uh, the date. So I'm going to go back to the balance sheet. Let's hit the good old drop down here. We'll hit the drop down. We'll bring this back to uh, January 31st. January 31st. That is it. We'll say done. And uh, so there we have it. So notice there's no accounts receivable here. It's not showing the AR. I'm going to go back to the to the prior tab and run the report. I'm going to say for the year to date, uh, this year to date, because that's just the easiest thing to do. So this year to date, and then we'll run that report. So there we have that, and we don't have the income that would be in the restricted income. So that's what we tried to set up, but it's not here because again, it's it's, it's going to track it in another way. I'm going to right click on this tab up up top again. I'm going to go back to the first one right clicking on this tab duplicating it once again and then if we go to the reports let's go to the reports on the right uh, side now if we run another report which is going to be tracking the pledges so it's not on the balance sheet uh but we're gonna we're gonna say i don't want it on the balance sheet but i want to be able to of course track it be able to track the pledges so we could say all right where's the pledges reports we're going to go down to the pledges by contact so we're under donations we want the pledges by contact so i'll go to the pledges by contact and that's how we can basically track uh, the pledges so there is the actual pledge so it's on this report this report doesn't tie into the balance sheet because it's in, under this method it would not be on the balance sheet 
And uh, if I go back to the first tab then, back to the first tab, and then we were to go to the people. So we go to people up top and we wanted to take a look at the contact list. We can also see it uh, here as well. If we go into the Pledger, Pledger 1, we can of course track that information and it, it shows here uh, as well. All right, now if we go back into the donations, back to the donations, and if you were using this method, if you were to use this method, then you could say, well, what happens when they give us the money? That's when we're gonna record the actual contribution. So on the financials, we wouldn't be recording the pledge, but we would be recording the contribution that we would receive from it. So we'd have the pledge, we track it, not recording the AR on the financials, but then be able to record the contribution. Note, if you were to then go to the contribution tab using this method, create another contribution, we're not actually gonna finalize this one, but just to show you the process, then you could go up top and you'd say, all right, now I've got the pledge, Pledger 1. I'm going to choose Pledger 1. And it'll actually then have the little drop down that'll say, hey, there's the pledge that, we, that you can tie to it. So then we would select this pledge and it would link to the pledge to, to decrease the pledge receivable that's not on the balance sheet but is being tracked uh, and record the actual in item here. Once we deposit that money, that's when it'll be normally recorded under this method. All right, so I'm gonna close this back out. I'll show you the, the other method we could uh, be using. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete the pledge. I'm gonna go back over to the pledges. Let's actually remove it. So I'm gonna remove the pledge. You can delete it by clicking on it and then go into the delete button, which I believe is going to be right there. So I'm gonna delete the pledge and we'll enter it into the receivable screen this time. So I'm gonna delete the pledge. All right, and then I'm gonna go into the accounts receivable and this time we'll track it through accounts receivable, but we'll put it in as uh, on, on the balance sheet as a receivable, but we'll say that it is um, in a restricted category. So I'm gonna go into to the fund accounting and then we're gonna go to the transactions and under the transactions dropdown, we want the accounts receivable. So we'll go on into the AR, the accounts receivable so then we'll enter our information here. I'm going to say once again, Pledger, Pledge, Pledge 1, Pledger 1. That's going to be our customer name. The uh, invoice date, I'm going to bring this on back to the 3rd again. So January 3rd. The amount was, I believe, 108, 108,000. Let's just double check that. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure this time. Yeah, 108,000. And then we could have a memo. The terms, uh, we, we could say like net 15, meaning it's due 15 days from the time period. There's the due date then. Invoice number is populating automatically for us, so we'll let that populate for us. And then I'm gonna tap through. We could have a message. Uh, if we so choose, then we'll be picking the accounts. Now note, this is kind of like an invoice for QuickBooks. It's got the same name and everything, so that would mean that invoice means accounts receivables going up. And it, it even tells you here, accounts receivable, is going to be going up that's what an invoice means that's our kind of like bill to someone else to us it's an invoice means accounts receivable is going up the other side that's going to be affected uh is going to be an income account typically now we want to pick the contributions that will be restricted so i'm going to put it into the restricted that'll put it into that column uh or that'll put it into that account and then we'll also put it into the restricted column so the fund account is going to be restricted we could put a comment if we so choose a percentage uh, and the amount. So I'm just going to put 100% going to this account. So if we needed to break it out then to, for example, different accounts or different funds, then we can use this method. We can add another row and break this out into, into different categories. And we'll see uh, some of that in a, in a later presentation. So I'm going to then go to the uh, restricted item over here. I'm going to add a tag, which is the time restriction. So the time I typed in time, or you could put in the number of 500. All right, there we have it. Now, what's this is going to do? It's going to be increasing the accounts receivable on the financial statements. It's going to be increasing the income, but going into the contributions income, it'll show up as the restricted column on our side-by-side -side kind of uh, act statement of activities. And then we'll have the tags that we can then show being in the category of the time uh, restriction type of restriction category. All right, let's go ahead and submit that and check it out. And it wants a memo here, which is probably a good policy. I'm just going to say pledge for the memo, which is probably not a good uh, memo. But that's what I'm putting there. I'm going to say submit then. Try this again. 
and see if it's okay see if it accepts that so that looks i think it did so now we're going to go and check it out let's go into the reports going all the way to the right to the reports let's refresh this screen with a little refreshing icon over here where you could select the entire url and hit enter and that should do it as well and then under the assets and it's not there so now normally when it's not there it's a date issue so i'm assuming this is a date issue so let me go back on over and check it out i'm going to go back on over and let's i'm going to i'm in the same screen on the first screen here's our receivable of the 108 so it's showing there if i scroll down i'd say okay what happened here here's our detail and here's our pledge so there's the pledge i'm going to click on that pledge and take a look at the date that has populated here and i put it in on uh march so somehow i didn't get back to april here or january <laughs> i want to get to january 3rd january 3rd so if you're doing this in real time of course uh hopefully it'll it would be easier to you know you'd be entering it on the, the same day so in any case let's check it out again i'm going to go ahead and save it again and then let's go back to the balance sheet back to the tab of the right let's go ahead and refresh it again with a little refresher icon and then uh see if this then pulls up for us all right there it is there's the ar now it's accounts receivable if i was to select the accounts receivable then we've got our detail notice uh we have the note being a pledge we see it's an invoice here if we were to click on that that would then take us to the detail of it i'm going to go then back back to the prior tab there's our information on the balance sheet then let's go to the income statement let's do the little refresher thing on the income statement up top a little refresher arrow so that we're working with a fresh report and we only like working with fresh reports now note here that we have it broken out by account so we have it broken out by these two accounts but we also have it broken out by the column restricted and unrestricted and we now have this one in the restricted column due to it being a time restriction and that's going to be a similar breakout as we saw over here in our Excel worksheet. Now, also note that you may want to, uh, we could use sub accounts to basically combine these if we, if we so choose to combine these two accounts and see if we want to report it externally in one account. I kind of like having two accounts as well as it being broken out in this format because I feel like that gives me like a double check. And then you may want to combine them together if you, if you feel it's necessary for uh, external use and purposes. All right, let's open up another report. I'm gonna go back to this tab where, where we had uh, our pledges report before, and I'm gonna go to our reports. Now we're gonna be tracking this, not in the pledges report, but in uh, the receivable. So standard type of uh, accounts receivable report. So in the quick access, I have accounts receivable here. I'm gonna scroll down and see where else we have the receivable report so we'll scroll down to the other reports where we have the aged receivables let's check that one out aged receivables we'll open that one up and then we have pledger one and there's our receivable if i bring it back to january then we bring it back to january 31st and we should then have our receivable that uh, is current or or due between one and 30 days so there is that report and then of course if i went back to our detail here and i went to our people item and we go to the contact list then we can also find uh the, the pledge in here as well so there's our pledger if we were to select on the pledger we can we can track the information uh here as well and we can look at the activity that we have for the pledger okay and then we also want to take a look at one other report and see if we can check out that tag that we made so now i'm gonna i'm gonna go to the reports again we're gonna go to the reports we're gonna go to the reports by tag tag based reports and let's take a look at an income statement so we're gonna have the income statement and we want uh the restricted tag reports because we made a restricted tab it's in the restricted column and now we're going to have the type of restriction. So I'm going to pull this one up and we're going to say that the date up top is going to be this year to date, let's say this year to date. And there it is. So notice how, how kind of nice this is and how you would basically um, show this to somebody. We could see how this is starting to be constructed. If I, if I go back on over to the income statement, 
we, we would present this to somebody first and say, here's the income statement, here's the restricted column, and here's the unrestricted column. And you can imagine the next question being, well, what kind of restricted items are there? You know, what is there in the restricted items or what kind of unrestricted items are there? And we'll, we'll break those out more, but you can see the starting to be broken out with the use of the tags. So then we say, okay, this restricted column adds up to the 108,000. If you wanna know the types of restrictions, here's our report by restriction. And, and this is gonna be a time restriction. That's all we have so far. So we'll add more columns here for other restrictions within this report. And, and you can see how this will basically be, be constructed and be how we'd want to present uh, this information to somebody else so it's not too overwhelming. It's not all on, on one report. We're gonna give that two column report and then we can give them more detail on some of our other reports that are gonna be sorted by these tags. That's gonna be it for now. Let's get out of here.